Welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management, a weekly conversation with area leaders about how to persevere during uncertain times. Now here's your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the new year and welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times. We have a great guest to get our year started. His name's Bill Sampson. Bill's a retired attorney couple great law firms he was a part of. He also uh, is a longtime KU fan and now has become an author. Bill, welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you. You know, one of the things that I'm always admired by somebody who can take their thoughts and put them into paper. I'm very comfortable being able to talk about things, but when you take those thoughts and put them into paper, how did you get into the, the whole idea of writing a book? And then we'll talk about your background. It started give or take ten years ago. I was uh, I, I attend the KU games in Lawrence, and when I get up the next morning, I pick up the Lawrence Journal World and I read the coverage of it. And this one particular morning, I I thought the Journal World's coverage of the game was was just not very good. In fact, I was pretty disappointed. And so I thought to myself, well, I'll, I'll just write my own article about the next game. And so I I came back from the game and I I wrote it up and I dutifully sent it to my two sisters and our three children. And I, I said, <laughs> what do you think about this? And they said, uh, well, shoot, this is, this is interesting. You know, you should, you should send me more of these things. So I, I, I continued to write this little article and, and as it happened, people found out about it. And so even though I don't think I knew the term, then it became a kind of blog about KU basketball. And by the end of that first season, uh, we, about 125 people had subscribed to it, so to speak. They'd let me know that they wanted to receive it. And so I sent it to them by email. And I called it from the third row, which is where we sit in the basketball, the basketball games. And it was a couple of years after that. I'd, I'd, I'd done this for now almost three full seasons. And, and my wife approached me one evening after we dropped off our guests, we, we always take guests to the game. And she said, you know, uh, you don't talk to anybody. You know, you just sit or stand there and make notes for your article. And I thought about that and I thought, you know, she's right. That's that's what I've been doing. So I, I sent a note to everybody on the blog and I said, this is my last season. I'm just not going to do it anymore. And and I did. I did stop. But this this these three seasons of articles were just sitting there on my computer and in the uh, fall of 2021, when I was just about to retire, I thought I could do something with that. Uh, and so I looked back on them and, and sure enough, uh, they were they were there and they could be adapted, if you will, to some sort of a novel. And well, so it's I, been fun. I've had a chance to read the book and I have the finishing parts. And so you don't want to be a spoiler for me on this bill, but um, it's interesting how you've done that. Before we go into kind of the book itself, uh -huh. give me a little bit of your background, because you have been a partner in two prestigious law firms and have done a background not only at KU and instructing and some other things. What's your quick background? Uh, my quick background is that I wanted to be a history major and a historian. I wanted to teach history. Uh, I didn't have that opportunity coming out of college because of the war in Vietnam. So I enlisted in the Navy, and my second choice was law school. And I got into a Navy program. I became what they call a judge advocate in the Navy, uh, finished that, and then came back to Wichita, Kansas, to start a private practice with the law firm there. And, and thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I just, I love the firm. I love the people that I was working with. I had, I had the chance to travel all over the central and western part of the state. That was enjoyable. And then in 1987, in, in the aftermath of my divorce, uh, I, I got reacquainted with the first lawyer whom I practiced with, a, a marvelous, marvelous lawyer named Gene Balloon. And Gene suggested that I move to Kansas City. And so I did. In 1987, I, I moved and, and joined the second firm that I practiced with, and I stayed with them until the end of 2021. Well, it's, uh, it's fun when you see that history, Bill, because yeah. you've taken some of that and you've weaved that into your book because you can see that. Your book's called Wheatfield. How'd you get a name like Wheatfield for a book from Lawrence, Kansas? I guess two reasons. Uh, number one, uh, as the people who might want to read the book will find out, there's a magnificent artisan bakery in Lawrence, Kansas named Wheatfields. 
it's a single word, um, but it's there. And I have, I've liked it, really liked it since I first encountered it. And I just figured that Wheatfield was going to play some kind of role in the novel when it does. Uh, but whenever I drive through Salina, Kansas, I am just so impressed with the wheat fields there uh, as they ripen uh, toward the end of June. Uh, it's, it's just beautiful to me. And so as I thought about what this book would be and, and who the main character would be, uh, it, it just became evident that it was going to be a high school student from Salina, and then he was going to make his way to Lawrence, Kansas. And so Wheatfield's uh, two words this time seem to be an appropriate title for the book. I know that you think of KU, you think of basketball, you mentioned that, writing the stories about that as well. But this is more than just a basketball book. You've expanded this to really talk. It, it's legal. There are several other things. How did you incorporate those in to make it a fun story to read? Well, I, I was in the middle of writing up the basketball stories, and I, and I literally had this thought, you know, who's going to want to read a book about just KU basketball? And, and, and there are people who would do that. But I would I thought that the you know the total number might be a little bit limited. And even those people, you know, as stalwart as they are about the basketball program, probably would enjoy something else about KU. So I thought I would write something about academic life at KU. And I did that. Um, and then when I finished that, and that part came very, very quickly. When I had finished that, uh, I thought to myself, I got this this handsome, uh, relatively charismatic, young basketball player uh, on the KU campus, you know, why wouldn't he have a girlfriend? Uh, but at the same time, uh, I wasn't very interested at, at, you know, at my age, writing a romance about 18 year olds. But I thought I could, I could flip this script a little bit and, and, and develop an infatuation by the boy for a really, really dynamic young woman student at KU. And it just occurred to me that someone who was brilliant and someone who was lovely and someone was from a foreign country would be intriguing. And so that's that's where we went. And the, the heroine, if you will, is from Iran. What I noticed in, in reading the book that you incorporate and tie those stories together, but there was one thing that, that surprised me. How did the whole Missouri, Kansas story fit in? Because I see that history, you know, you want to be a history teacher. I see a little bit of that history teacher playing out in the book. Yeah, the, uh, the business about Missouri and Kansas is important. Um, and I think very few people understand that it does go back all the way to the Civil War. And even, even in the last couple of years, uh, I have heard anecdotally that people are just surprised by the intensity of the dislike for, for for both schools of the other you know the Missouri people don't like Kansas and the Kansas people don't like Missouri and the question is you know why what's what's all this about and because I believe it go back to the Civil War and because I had actually written this paper uh, a serious essay on Quantrill's raid in 1863 I just thought it, it fit and so I was able to introduce that into the book as a means of explaining to this young basketball player uh, why everybody was so amped up about playing the Tigers. How long did it take you to write the whole book? I suspect uh, I was done with the basketball piece in a month. Uh, I know the academic piece took a month. And and then the the editing of the book, which which for me is a a pretty careful, some people who have worked with me would say painstaking process, uh, probably took another couple of months. And then after that, it was just trying to, uh, to find a publisher and work with the publisher to get it all the way into a book. And so I started in give or take October of 2021. And, and the book was ready to go to a printer, if you will, by June of this year. When you do that, are you, when you look at Amazon, because I pulled a book on Amazon and uh -huh. ordered a couple copies of it. Uh, do you ever look at Amazon and say, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm on Amazon with a book. 
Yeah, th there was actually a moment like that. Uh, I can't remember exactly how it is that I I found myself on the An Amazon book page, but I did, and 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 there I was, and, and it was cool. It was a, it was a really nice moment to think that somebody somebody was going to have access to this, and well, not just you, me. Yeah, and and you can go, you can get that, and it, it's kind of a cool Kansas book too because of the wheat field. And who did your design work for the graphics? Are you an artist too? No, no. There's a wonderful painter uh, in Lawrence, Kansas, named Louis Kopp. Uh, Louis is, is very well known for a number of things, uh, probably chiefly his series on prairie fires. But I've known Louis for a long time. And, and when, it, when, when, I was, when it was clear that, uh, this, that this was going to happen, I, I, had, I had a publisher and then suddenly we were talking about covers. I immediately knew that I wanted Louis to paint a painting. Uh, and so if you don't mind another 30 seconds on this, uh, I, I went it. to Louis... To Louis's house and we sat down in his studio and we talked for four or five minutes about what I had in mind and Louis simply got it he said give me a couple days and I'll, I'll send you an image and what he sent me was virtually the painting that you see on the cover of the book it was just a remarkable bit of intuition and skill on his part well it's beautiful and and that uh, leads you into a good book as well Bill I want to take a quick break I'm going to come back and talk about Maybe a sequel, how you would follow up, and what do you want to do next? Hang on with me for just a second. Our program right. brought to you by Worth Wealth Management. We'll be back after this. The most successful investors are those that can keep their emotions in check and take a longer term view on you know, what portfolios will be worth three to five years down the road. I'd say that's the most important in determining what investor outcomes are. Market corrections will continue in the future. We've seen many of them over the years, only to see equity prices rise higher, and that'll be the case in the future. Worth Wealth Management, enhancing lives and strengthening families. Welcome back to Forward Ever with our guest, Bill Sampson. Bill is from Lawrence, Kansas, and finished and, and retired from a log uh, career and, and now has written a book called Wheat Fields, and we've been talking about that book, talking about uh, the storyline that went behind it, and frankly, hope you get a chance to take a look at the book. It's an interesting read. It's fun to read because there's so much history, and I'll say geographical references to Kansas. If you've ever tra traveled down I-70, Bill, did you have to go back and forth a couple more times just to write the geographical part of the book? Well, I, I didn't have to, but as it turned out, uh, in in the time period that I was just getting into writing what I what I decided then would become a novel, I was traveling back and forth to Denver and also to Utah on I seventy, and it it just seemed logical to include that. And then then as I traveled that same highway a couple more times, there was some very serious fact checking involved, as, as you might well imagine, making sure that the numbers of the highway is correct and, and some of these things worked out. But I was pretty familiar with Fort Riley. I'd driven past that many, many times in my life. Well, what's interesting, I've driven past that, grew up in Clay Center, just north of there. And yeah. so being around Fort Riley, that whole fort thing, uh, that was old home. But I learned some things uh, reading about that that you kind of think, well, boy, I should have paid more attention more often. So thank you for bringing that part in. What's your sequel? Do you have a sequel? Well, I, you know, I don't have anything that is uh, clearly in mind. My some, some people have asked me that question, and, and my answer has been, if people read this book and are interested in, in, in the characters and are interested in what happens to them, then I'm certainly open to writing another book. But I'm not presumptuous enough to think that people are just going to want one because I wrote the first one. So what do your friends say? You know, the people who have read the book have been very complimentary about it, and, and they've been encouraging uh in, in as in the writing process, whatever that is, it, I know it differs for people. But for me, uh, I would write, let's say, a chapter, or I would write a couple chapters, and I would send them to people, and I would say, "What do you think?" And people have been encouraging from the very beginning. It's been it's been nice to work with these folks. Well, you have a website. Tell us about your website uh, where you talk about the book, and uh, that way people and people know how to get to Amazon. But you also have your website uh, that's out there yeah. that people can go and find out more about the book and about you. Yeah, the website address is www.billsampsononeword.us. Uh, it's not it's not .com because, to my surprise, 
someone had already acquired BillSampson.com. But that's my web, website address. And, and if you go there, uh, you can not only read an excerpt from the book, uh, you can learn about events that are coming up. For example, we have a, a book launch, if you will, in Lawrence on January 19. Uh, you can also read about book signings. There's one in Wichita coming up on the 16th of February. And then uh, thanks to Greg German, who put the website together, there is this clever thing called a buy button. And if you click on that, you are, you are transported electronically to Amazon booksellers. And there right in front of you is Amazon's posting of the book. And you can, not, you can order it right off the Amazon website. Well, Bill, I, I'm going to, when I get my book in, I'll bring it down because I need a real signed copy of it if I'm going to have a copy of this book. So sometime when I see you next, I'm going to have that book for you to sign. At least that I hope it gets here. <laughs> Bill, so good to talk to you and, and look forward to maybe the next story. I'm looking forward to the last part of the book. I have the last few chapters to read. And so I'm looking forward to that and appreciate you being on our program today. You bet. It's been my pleasure. Great to talk with you. Bill Sampson has been our guest here on Forward Ever. Bill, an author, lives in Lawrence, Kansas, and talks about Kansas history in his book called Wheatfield. You can find it on Amazon. Thanks for listening to Forward Ever. It's brought to you by Worth Wealth Management, where you can live with confidence. I'm Gary Shorman. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us for Forward Ever, leading in challenging times. Presented by Worth Wealth Management. Join us right here next week for another episode with host Gary Shorman. Until then, remember to move forward ever, backward never.